السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين باعث الأنبياء والمرسلين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق وأعز المرسلين حبيب إله العالمين أب القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المنتجبين سيما بقية الله روحي وأرواح العالمين له الفداء بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم كل وليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا قال الله الحكيم في محكم كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولو شئنا لرفعناه بها ولكنه أخلد إلى الأرض واتبع هواه فمثله كمثل الكلب إن تحمل عليه يلهث أو تتركه يلهث ذلك مثل القوم الذين كذبوا بآياتنا فاقصص القصص لعلهم يتفكرون آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى Dear mu'mineen and mu'minat, brothers and sisters, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our fasting, our deeds in this month of Ramadan and multiply our rewards and guide us to do more and more of the provision of taqwa, more and more of the acts that would add in our account for our hereafter, inshallah. In Surah Al-A'raf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduces a personality a story that he says فَقْصُصِ الْقَصَصَ narrate to them those stories so that they may reflect we have been discussing the concept of zuhd and in the concept of zuhd or asceticism detachment from dunya lack of desire in its basically glamour and the shiny gold and silver and all the attractions of dunya. This concept, in fact, I mentioned in the last few nights some of its benefits and some of the harms of neglecting it. Tonight, as I want to discuss, in fact, last night we discussed one aspect or one method in which we can gain more and more zuhd and detachment from dunya and that is through remembering death through remembering death we can inshallah remember uh, detach from dunya and remember more what we need for our akhirah the other concept that i want to introduce and also through this concept, we have no choice but to remind ourselves of the harms of lack of detachment from dunya. This concept or this method is the method of reflection, at tafakkur. So if somebody asks, how can I gain taqwa? And how can I gain zuhd in dunya? Because through ta- zuhd in dunya, one would want more taqwa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us وَتَزَوَّدُوا فَإِنَّ خَيْرَ الزَّادِ التَّقْوَى Increase in what? Increase in taqwa. The best provision is taqwa. In this dunya we are trying to increase الْهَاكُمُ التَّكَاثُرُ People are busy increasing in all the worldly things. 
the money and the assets and the properties and the children and the gold and the silver and all of the material things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying this is not worthy of accumulating. It is taqwa that is worthy of accumulating. And he is telling us that through detaching from dunya, we can gain that. Because if we want akhirah, you have to detach from dunya. Here, the tafakkur lead us to think about these concepts. What is right and what is wrong? What is worthy and what is not worthy of striving for and stressing over? If one has ham over akhirah, it's well worth it. If one is stressing over, over where is my place in akhirah? Do I have a good place in akhirah? Do I have a place with Ahlul Bayt? Do I have a place where the people of Araf, the people of elevation would invite me and with them I, I am admitted to paradise? Or billah, will I be amongst those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we were reciting in fact tonight ayat and ayat description of that scene the elevations and the people who are admitted to paradise through them and the people that were admitted to hellfire and then وَمِنْ بَيْنِهِمَا hijab, and there is that barrier between them which ones am I amongst? This is something I need I need to be concerned about. I need to stress over that and not what happens in this world and the business and the every material thing that is in this world. Not that, as a, again I say, not that we give up anything and striving and working hard in dunya. This is, this is not what we are suggesting or what Islam suggests. It is rather not to stress over it and not to be owned by it that it is in my control. I decide when it's in my benefit to give it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or to spend it for my family's comfort and convenience or to give, uh, to pay a debt off with it and so on as we mentioned in the riwayat. Here I want to reflect on this story that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala narrates in Surah Al-A'raf ayah 176. The story uh, is of a man that, whose name is not mentioned, in fact, in the Qur'an. He is mentioned in the riwayat. The reason of the narration of the ayah, or, or the revelation of the ayah, in there we learn about this man. His name is Bal'am or Bal'am Ba'ura. Bal'am Ba'ura, his name is pronounced differently by different people, regardless this individual had so much knowledge and he had earned according to some the name known as Ismullah al-A'zam the great name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with such level of knowledge and such level of spirituality he had the ability to actually ask and he would be given he had Ismullah al-A'zam that if he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something he would be given whatever he asks for according to the riwayat he lived at the time of Nabiullah Musa ala nabina wa alihi wa alayhi salam this Bal'am or Bal'am Ba'ura with so much knowledge some narrators say that he was sent, some narrations suggest that he was sent by the Prophet of his time, perhaps Nabiullah Musa ala nabina wa alihi wa alayhi salam, to go to the people of Canaan and to invite them. And he went there trying to invite the people. Yet, the people of Canaan said to him you will accept what you are sharing with us but we have a condition what is your condition our condition is that you pray using Ismullah al-A'zam not to allow the prophet of the time and Bani Israel to have power over us because they are coming and they are owning more and more of the land and they're becoming 
the, basically the government in every region, we don't want that to happen. So we want you to pray using Ismullah al-A'lam, using the power that you have to block them, and then we will accept you. He said, how can I pray against the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? They, according to the narrations, they continuously lured him and bribed him. They told him, we will give you the best position. You will be like our president. You will be the leader. You will have the position and you, have, you will have all the wealth that you want. Often people want what? They fight for what? All the wars, wars that are happening to, in today's world over what? Huh? Position and money. Position and wealth. He was given those two things. We will give you the position and we will give you the wealth, the money that you want. But you need to do the prayer. So eventually he agreed. And therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took from him the status that he had. He went from being praised in the ayat. And he went from being a companion and a, in fact a messenger of the messenger of his time. Basically one of the appointees by the messenger of his time. From being that to somebody who became an enemy of the messenger of his time, an enemy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wal-ayyadu billah. The ayah says, وَاتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ نَبَأَ الَّذِي آتَيْنَاهُ آيَاتِنَا Recite to them the story of the man whom we gave our signs. He had signs. He had ayat. فَانْسَلَخَ مِنْهَا He what he in, in silah is when you detach something from yourself. The signs were there. He detached him fr himself from it to what? To attach himself to dunya. All the narrations, regardless of the different stories, they are clear that he detached from that for the sake of wealth and position. Wherever it was. Some narrations, they say he was, before the incident, before them moving from Egypt, therefore he was in Mesr, and that based on those narrations, he was influenced by Fir'aun, and paid by Fir'aun, and therefore he became a supporter of Fir'aun. Regardless of where he was, the story is very clear, that he detached himself from what he knew, the knowledge and the signs, to attach himself to dunya. And therefore, his maqam was gone. In the eyes of God, his status was gone. He had a status in this dunya, which is short. And he had wealth in this dunya, which is short. But in, in the eyes of God, his maqam was completely gone. فَأَتْبَعْهُ shaytan. Therefore, when he detached himself from the signs, shaytan followed him and lured him, he became a servant of shaitan. فَكَانَ مِنَ الْغَاوِينَ And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says his example in ayah 176, his example is like, excuse the terms here, the dog. مَثَلُهُ كَمَثَلِ الْكَلْبِ In what regard? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah uses such a beautiful example, such a beautiful parable. He's saying he is like a dog who is doing lahath, yalhath. What is the dog that is yalhath? The dog with his tongue, with his tongue out and breathing so fast. The tongue is completely out and breathing so fast and therefore looks like he has run, run for such a distance and he is so tired huh? and he is in desperate need he is so hungry so thirsty that's what it looks like 
He says the problem with the dog is that in tahmil alayhi yalhath aw tatrukhu yalhath in all cases he is doing the lahath whether you go towards him or leave him on his own he is doing the lahath he is acting that based on his nature it became it becomes his nature now we know scientifically today why does the dog put his tongue out and why does he do the lahath all the time there is no perspiration from his body and therefore that is his way however Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is using that parable, that example for us to reflect. And he says, these are the examples, recite them to the, the people so that they can reflect. The issue is, if you go after dunya, you would be doing وَالْعَيَادُ billah lahath at all times, regardless. Whether dunya comes to you or it goes away from you, you are doing the lahath. What is the lahath in this case? This constant breathing fast with the tongue out is the stress over it. If you have millions and you are going after dunya, attached to dunya, or if you have peanuts, no matter what you have, if you are attached to dunya, you would be stressing and breathing fast all the time. This is how it works. But if you detach from dunya, then there is no لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون regardless of the circumstances back to the hadith from Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa alayhi when he was asked what is the had what is the limit of zuhud he said this ayah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says لِكَيْ لَا تَأْسَوْ عَلَى مَا فَاتَكُمْ وَلَا تَفْرَحُوا بِمَا آتَاكُمْ do not be emotional and excited in all cases whether there's a lot of wealth or poverty whether you are losing or gaining no matter what happens dunya in dunya in the in with regards to the worldly material things in dunya indifferent there's a story that they say of a farmer that they narrated at the time of the uh, in China at the time of the emperors that he had apparently a horse and the horse goes away and goes missing so the people come to him telling him that the horse went missing and therefore you're gonna be suffering financially and this is so unfortunate. Why did this happen to you? Why such misfortune happened to you? He said, maybe. In other words, it may be misfortune. This is how you see it. But maybe it's not. Then, soon after that, the horse comes back, the same horse that went away, with some wild horses, a bunch of wild horses. So the people come to him, and they say to him, you are so lucky. It's not one horse now that has come back. So many horses have come back. He said, maybe. You know the lucky part? Maybe. Soon after that, his son, trying to train the, or tame some of these wild horses, he's trying to tame them. He falls and breaks his leg. So the people again rush to him. This is so unfortunate. What a misfortune happened to you now. Your son is the, the one who works. You're an old man. How is he going to now take care of the farm? You're going to suffer. He said, maybe. And soon after that, the, basically the army, the emperor sent, he said, we are getting attacked from other countries or from the, uh, you know, the neighboring countries or something. We need everybody to come to the army any and any fit person young fit people they all have to come so they gathered every young person in the village except for his son why because his son was not capable he was not fit he had a broken leg so everybody in the village came to him and said to him well guess what you are so lucky they took everybody and your son 
is the only one that stayed behind. And what did he say this time? Maybe. This is the reality. We don't know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what is best for us. This is the tafakkur that leads to zuhd. If we reflect on this, we won't be too affected by what happens around us with regards to dunya, and we won't be too attached to it. Whether, we, whether, whether Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us. In fact, when we are given a lot, the amana is heavier. The trust is bigger. And the responsibility is bigger. When they asked Amir al-Mu'mineen salawatullah wa salamu alayhi, they said to him, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, why is it that money cannot stay in your hand? The example, they didn't use that, but the example that they use that, they use typically in some uh, Middle Eastern countries basically, they say it's like lead. You know, lead, the, uh, basically the, uh, what, they put, what they put in the, uh, in the thermos, uh, thermometers, yeah? What they put in thermometers, yeah, lead. Mercury, sorry. I'm looking for the, I'm looking for, mercury. Mercury, if you put it in your hand, does it stay? It is so runny, yeah? So the, the example of money in the hands of Amir al-Mu'mineen were like mercury. They say so certain people, that's how money is with them. No matter how much you give them, that's... But not for wastage. He would give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They asked him why. He said, because I realized that on the day of judgment, I will be asked twice about wealth. How I earned it and how I spend it. How I earned it I will be asked about, was it halal or was it haram? Fi halalihi, fi haramihi, iqab, wa fi halalihi, hisab, wa fi shubuhati, itab. What you earn and how you spend, if it's halal, there's still hisab. If it's haram, there's a punishment. If it's doubtful, Itab. Itab means lowering your status. Okay? You should have known better. You should have stayed away from it. Huh? But in the halal is what? Hisab. And the longer, the more you have, the longer your hisab is. He said, I realize that there is hisab on everything that I have, and there is hisab on how I spend it. So the less I have, the less I have to spend time for hisab. This is the reality of it. And therefore, I'm not saying again, I'm not suggesting that we should not strive. But you strive for the right reason, with the right attitude, making sure that we do not get into what has shubha in it, what is doubtful. We do not get into haram by any means. It is not worth it. No matter what it is, it is not worth it. We don't need the haram because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed every penny of my sustenance from the time I come to this world. It is my choice whether I want to earn it with halal or haram. If I earn it through halal, it is all well and good. If I earn it through haram, it's taken out from my halal, halal part anyhow. I am not going to increase it. Therefore, stay Calm, do not go overboard. Dunya, this is the reflection. Dunya is not worth dying for. It's not worth killing ourselves for. We are going to all departed one day. What is worth working for? And what is, what is worth striving for? And what is, what is really worth dying for? Is our akhirah and where we live in akhirah. This is what it's worth striving and working hard for and this is what every single one of us should be reflecting on when we're making judgment in everything in our life you assessing anything is this path is this transaction is this, is this purchase is this sale is this 
word that I'm saying is whatever it is, assess it when it comes to dunya, assess it, is it beneficial for my akhirah or is it not? This is the tafakkur. Two things, a reminder, two things. If we want to gain zuhd, one is through remembering death and one is tafakkur. They're very well related. When we remember death and we do tafakkur, we do the assessment, we will find out which is beneficial for our akhirah, we increase from that. Which is not beneficial from our akhirah, we do whatever is necessary for that and suffice with it. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the opportunity to reflect and see what is right and what's wrong and what's good for us and what's harmful for us for our akhirah. We ask him to make us amongst those who listen to what's said and follow what's best for akhir da'wan and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina wa nabiyina muhammadin wa alihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin. Allahumma salli ala. Subhanallah, Allah,